Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'm sorry for the delay in a lot of videos and content here. We've been going through quite a bit of changes here at the uh, studio, if you will, my office. Um, and uh, today we are going to be checking out one of those changes and that is Microsoft Flight Simulator with Windows 11. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Alright, so first off, let's get a couple of housekeeping things out of the way because I want to make sure you guys get the best experience possible if you make the move to Windows 11. So a little bit of information from the tech side of things here. First off, to understand how it works, you need to make sure that your motherboard is capable of supporting what is called TPM. Okay, I'm not going to get into what TPM is specifically. It is a security setting, it is a protocol, um, but uh, I'm going to keep it very high level. What I want you guys to do is to determine what type of motherboard you have, the exact model number. You can typically find it on the face of the motherboard somewhere written in it. You know, For example, mine is the Asus ROG Crosshair 7 Hero. Um, so what I would do, if I didn't know already, I would go to Google and I would type in, does the Asus ROG Crosshair Hero 7 support TPM? Okay, and as long as you get yes, that's the first step. Second step is going to be you're going to have to go into your BIOS determining how to do so, based on, and BIOSes are going to be different based on motherboard type. Okay, you're going to have to go into your BIOS and enable TPM because typically it is disabled by default, even with mine, and mine's only a year and a half old. <clears throat> and the final step is before you can update to Windows 11, you need to make sure you are running the latest version of Windows 10. Okay. So we've got all that out of the way, you're ready to upgrade. It will give you the option to from the Windows update setting. You run into Windows 11. There's a couple of different steps here that you wanna do. First thing that I also want you guys to be prepared of, <clears throat> excuse me, AMD Ryzen users like myself. Yes, at the moment we are expected to take a hit in some titles, not all, some titles um, we are expected to get a reduction in frame rate by switching to Windows 11. Microsoft made it no secret that they were working with directly with Intel to optimize Windows 11 for the uh, next generation of Intel processors to come out. Uh, if you guys want a really good video on that and more information on that, check out Jay's Two Cents. Uh, he does a fantastic video to, where he talks about the uh, uh, Windows 11 and why you should quote unquote not upgrade. I did it because I know that people will be doing it, and I know that uh, you guys are going to be looking for some information on that, so, and that's why we're here today. So, the next thing is, I know we're getting into a bit of a tech chat here for a minute, but I want to make sure you guys have all the information that I can provide to try to help out as a community member here. So the final thing that I want you to be aware of is to back everything that is important to you up. Okay, you will still have to reinstall all of your software and we'll talk about why in just a minute. Okay, so make sure you have yourself an external hard drive or something that can be used to back up your software and programs. And by software, I mean like all of your saved games, your mods, your add-ons, things like that, anything that's important to you on your computer. And then I want you to go to Google or to go to YouTube, and I want you to look up how to do a clean install of Windows 11. You need to do the in-place upgrade first. But in the IT world, we never want to do in-place upgrade. We, we don't like in-place upgrades. Um, and in-place basically just means on top of. And your initial installation of Windows 11 will be just like they did when they first pushed out Windows 10. Okay, it's going to upgrade Windows 10 to Windows 11. And what happens, you get a lot of trash that gets left behind, okay? And you don't want that. And, and you'll still notice a performance increase, a lot of you. It'll seem cleaner and smoother. Windows 11 definitely looks very nice. Um, but uh, you're going to want to wipe your computer and start from scratch and install a fresh copy of, of Windows 11. But you, you have to do the in-place upgrade first. That way you get licensed with Microsoft on Windows 11 if you choose to go this route. All right. And again, check YouTube for videos on how to do that because it is a detailed process. I want to make sure you guys don't miss anything. Um, I'll put a link, a good link, uh, or excuse me, a link to a good video on how to accomplish this down in the description below if you guys are interested in going that route. Okay, now let's get into the performance that I have th seen thus far with Microsoft Flight Simulator and Windows 11. 
All right. So first off, let's talk about a couple of things. The biggest things to remember when we're talking about frame rates here, let's get that going here. I know that's going to be very interesting for everybody is I haven't noticed really much of a change, honestly. And I, again, I am a Ryzen user and based on the information that we currently have, Ryzen users are expected to see a uh, degradation in frames per second. Okay, but as you can see, I'm still in the high 50s. Now, let me give you guys my graphic settings. I did have to adjust after Sim Update 6. I put my render scaling down to 80. Let's bump it up to 90 and see if I what I get at 90. So about 10 frames per second for every 10% uh, here, if you will. Okay, um, now 85, 90 is my sweet spot. I don't notice a ton of difference being in 4K. Definitely a point where I'm still very, very happy with it. 45 frames per second in Microsoft Flight Simulator, nothing to crab about, okay? You're not going to notice. I mean, everything still looks pretty smooth. It's a little funky. I have noticed that, um, but I, I don't know what to attain that to. I did notice some of this. Again, I noticed this with Sim Update 6, so it's really hard to determine what the differences are. Now, let's talk about the installation process um, and, and everything that I've seen since then. The biggest thing that you also have to take into consideration is after years of using Windows 10, right? And after years of you've built up softwares, you removed softwares, add softwares, taken softwares away, put new add-ons and taken add-ons out, blah, 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 blah. All of these things leave, again, little pieces of dirt behind, if you will, on your computer and can slow it down, okay? And it may never be to a point where it's a gradual degradation performance, so you don't really catch it if you catch my drift, okay? And so what I'm seeing here now is literally a brand new copy of Windows on a clean computer um, with all of the software freshly installed. All of my add-ons freshly installed. There's nothing left behind from previous ones. So I'm actually not noticing any performance loss. What I have noticed right away, when, or Microsoft Flight Simulator installed faster. Uh, uh, there's no ands, if, or buts about it in my mind. It absolutely installed faster than it did the last time I did it on Windows 10. And you guys, if you guys go back through my videos, I think I have two or three times where I have wiped Microsoft Flight Simulator off of my machine and reinstalled it. Um, now, um, in this particular installation, it was definitely the fastest. The other thing is load times. I have noticed an incredible, incredible improvement in the load time. Um, man, I used to be able to, from the time that I went from the world map and hit the fly button, right, to actually load into the aircraft as we are now, um, I could go to the um, kitchen, I could grab myself a drink, talk to my wife and kids for a minute, blah, 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 come back, you know, mess around with my controls, my headset, and I'd still be at the loading screen. Now it's probably under, I would say it's definitely under 60 seconds, okay? I didn't actually time the last load. But uh, you know what? Let's uh, let me let me let me give you guys that. Why not? What have we got to lose here, right? That's what this is all about: is showing you guys the performance changes. All right. So even getting back to the world map, bing bada boom. I mean, it's quick. Okay, it wasn't that quick for me before. I don't know how some of you guys' systems are. Maybe I'm just finally catching on to the candy that's already been here. But uh, let's go ahead and set our departure again. Let's go back into fly. Now it is going to be a bit faster on this one because it's cached now. But watch this. This is almost what I'm seeing when I first load up, okay? This is going to be pretty quick as it stalls, right? <laughs> um, the other thing I have seen is uh, now I have yet to take a flight, okay? I have loaded in and out of the plane. Boom, there we are, guys. I mean, that I don't even think that was 30 seconds. I really don't. Um, and we can you can go back and, and time it on, on the YouTube here video. You know, you'll be able to tell. Um I have yet to take a flight, okay? And we are also in a modded aircraft. This is JP Logistics Cessna 152. Um, by the way, if you guys can put it in the comments, how do you get rid of Penelope here? Um, and that's for you, Ranger. Um, I don't want Penelope flying with me. This is already a cramped aircraft, but I can't remember how to get rid of the dang co-pilot body. Um, anyway, so we're going to fly JP Logistics Cessna 152. Again, this is a modded aircraft, so you got to take some of that into consideration when you think about frame rates. We are also at a modded airport. This is uh, my hometown, Tucson International Airport, um, and um, I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look on who the developer is, but again, a very detailed version of Tucson International. Um, so it's not the default scenery either, so you got to take that into consideration. Um, we do not have the Rex textures installed. These are the default textures um, right now. Um, so there's nothing else that's editing the scenery at the moment um, other than the map and the aircraft being modded. 
The other thing you have to take into consideration when looking at my frames per second is that I'm also actively recording. That's going to impact our FPS. The recording is done through NVIDIA Shadow Play, which is probably the best way to do it anytime you're using your graphics drivers to actually handle the recording. Um, I stream using Streamlabs OBS, but I always record using NVIDIA Shadow Play because it's being directly from the GPU, you're going to get the best performance. So there's a couple frame rates to be to be gained by stopping the recording as well. Um, let me just see what that changes to. Hang on. Yeah, with the recording stopped, I gained about three frames. Okay, so call this between 45 and 50. Obviously, we're bouncing around a bit. So now let's go ahead and, and we're going to take her up and we're going to see if there's any issues. I have yet to see any crash to desktop. Knock on wood. Let's hope it stays that way. Um, but uh, let's get our plane going here. So first thing we're going to do. Okay, make sure that uh, we're all safe outside here. Um, we're gonna make sure our parking brake is set. Parking brake pull is on. Let's turn the fuel on. Let's get our uh, alternators and batteries turned on here. Dude, 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 it's been a while since I've flown this aircraft. Been a really long time. Got full mixture going. Let's crack the throttle a bit. And let's go ahead and give a nice clear prop out the window. Oh, you know what? We should probably turn our lights on too. Beacon light on, nav light on. Let's crack that throttle a little further. Mmm, what's going on here? Fuel's on. Mixture's in. Throttle's in. Shouldn't need the primer. I don't think there is a primer in this aircraft, is there? I don't think it's got an electric primer. Uh, oh, primer. Let's just pump it a couple times. There we go. There she goes. Bring me to life. Horrible Amy Lee. All right, RPMs. Let's pull them back to about a thousand here. Looking good. Looking good. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Avionics systems. Let's see if we can get them turned on today. Uh Oh, there we go. There it is. All right, let's do that. Get those ones turned on. I love this plane. He did such a good job with this. And it's funny, too, because I actually... <laughs> the Cessna 152 is one of those planes like, oh, my God, I don't want to fly this thing. It's like a tug, you know? But uh, this was a fun one to fly because it's modeled so well. JP Logistics really did a fantastic job with this. Really did a fantastic job. And uh, that's basically it. That's all we're worried about today. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, so let's get our taxi light turned on. And then I'm going to get my head tracker turned on so we can fly without uh, using the mouse and look around and have some good times. And uh, we'll get airborne. So I had to mess with it. You guys are getting two videos right out of the gate today. I had to redo some of my track IR settings. They're still not quite right, as you can see. But they're not too terrible either. Um, actually, my left yaw got screwed up. So give me a second. You guys are going to see how that's edited real quick. We're going to go to mappings. I'm going to go to yaw. And I'm not sure how that got changed so dramatically, but it did. All right, that's better. Still got to have to fine tune it. And uh, you guys will find, if you guys are new to that kind of thing, uh, fine tuning it does take a minute. It really does. All right, I'm going to set myself also a custom camera real quick. So let's do Control Alt and 1. And then now I'm going to recenter my camera. Make sure I'm in the view that I selected. Take a look at Penelope's head. And now, all right, we're good to go. Let's get this plane out of here. And let's go for a little flight. So there definitely, like I said, there is a performance change. Um, now, many of you may be saying, you know, why aren't you using a default aircraft, blah, blah, blah. There's two schools of thought, right? I mean, the modded aircraft are one of the biggest reasons that, that we fly. I mean, you know, are, are you going to be flying the default aircraft? You know, I mean, really? Um, and if you do, great. Then you'll probably have better luck. I guarantee the mod and the sceneries are having... Uh, an impact. I can absolutely guarantee that. Um, and again, 
I mean, looking at the difference between, you know, my uh, render scale resolution, you know, I could absolutely turn that down a little bit. Uh, probably go down to 80 and get away with it, get a couple frames back. I mean, we're still at almost, you know, bouncing between 40 and 50. Um, and there's still some Windows 11 optimization that I need to do. Okay, there's a couple of videos I want to try out that I've found. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, it, it's, it's, it comes down to the preference here. Let's go ahead and get those landing lights turned on. Let's get the strobe light on. Although strobe light came on a little early. Flaps are already set. <clears throat> you know, I didn't even look at what the winds were. Brakes. Hey, 152. <laughs> I got lucky. I got lucky. I never get 1-1 one, one left. Almost never. That's what this runway is. I always get 2-9 or right at the other end of this freaking thing. Always, always, always. All right, and I should probably also set our altimeter. There we go, good. Remember, this is more based on performance. We're not, I'm not really looking for that authentic flight. I'm trying to keep it close, but. Airspeed alive. It's 40 knots, looking for 50. 50 knots, rotating. Good pickup, good girl. There's that crosswind pushing us over a bit. If you guys are interested in my camera settings, be sure to check out that uh, video I just mentioned. Um, these really aren't too bad. These are... I'm going to have to just a little bit. I'm having to turn my head a little further than what I'd like to take a look at what I'm looking at, but uh, that's okay. I mean, if it gives you an idea, I'm almost... I'm probably about 40 degrees to look out the right window, so it's realistic. Um, I tend to keep it a little bit more shallow because of the recordings. That way I'm near the microphone. All right, we're above 300 feet. Flaps up. And she is a little, she's a slow little bug, isn't she? Slow and steady wins the race with this little one. I am glad for the trim wheel update, or the trim adjustment update, I should say, from Sim Update 6. It's not near as aggressive, which is nice. All right, so, so far, frames are looking good. What are we getting limited by? Main thread, and that makes sense. So you can see up there underneath the FPS, that green and red flashing bar it keeps saying limited by main thread. That means the CPU is limited, and that's what we're expecting to see with, unfortunately, AMD Ryzen processors. Again, Microsoft made it no secret that they were working directly with Intel to optimize Windows 11 for Intel's next gen release. I can't remember what the name of it is, Overlake or something like that. Um, and uh, so us guys that uh, are using AMD, we were sort of left in the crapper for a little while. Now, I'm sure it will be something that gets fixed. Um, you know, it would not be profitable for Microsoft to not do so, especially given Intel's prices always being as stupid as they are. And before anyone starts fanboying or calling me a fanboy and crap like that, this is my first AMD processor since the FX series. I've been running Intel, uh, uh, the 7700K, I ran the 8700K, and I almost bought the 9900K. Um, it's just I didn't want to pay Intel's prices for where Ryzen was um, very comparable. Uh, they both have their areas at which they succeed, are better at. Um, Intel, my understanding is single thread performance, they still dominate. So basically video games, Intel is still the way to go. But you get into multi-core processing, and uh, the game changes there quite a bit. You know, video editing, things like that. Um, AMD sends, tends to tends to take the pocket there. So, but, I mean, guys, 50 frames per second on average, climbing out. 
Now, I'm not in the A320. The A320 is going to be a whole nother test in the beast in itself. Um, just naming one that immediately pops in my head. I would say the A320 is probably by far the hardest on frames. So be keeping that in mind. That's something yet to test as well. Um, but, you know, just starting up the A320 is a, is a video in itself almost. Um, I wanted to keep it to general aviation. I think that's still a very big primary focus and probably the general populace. We like to fly the smaller aircraft. We've got another one that we're going to be testing out later today that hopefully you guys will enjoy. We'll be, uh, be on the lookout for that video. So you guys actually might have three videos today. And then we also have a live stream tonight. So it um, should be a fun day. So overall consensus as far as Windows 11, the upload or the load time for the Microsoft Flight Simulator significantly faster. Installation process once files are downloaded significantly faster. Um, obviously, Microsoft Flight Simulator is primarily a cloud installation, meaning that it's downloading directly and installing at the same time. Um, so your internet speed definitely going to have to play into that. If you have a very low internet speed or a slower internet speed, uh, you may not notice much of a difference. Also keep in mind that with the load times as I discussed earlier, you're looking at things like this is a fresh installation. However, that's also one of the biggest reasons why you always want to do an operating system install on a clean platform. Remember what I told you, you are going to need to do the in-place upgrade. You're going to need to install Windows 11 on top of Windows 10 the first time you do it. That will get you licensed at, with Microsoft for Windows 11. Once you do that, please make sure to check out the video link that I have in the description below to do a clean install. That's where the performance becomes night and day. Um, now you're also going to want to make sure one of the things that the video that I have does not really talk about is download if you're comfortable with it. Now Windows 11 can do it for you. I don't recommend it this way, but it's not necessarily a game changer. But my recommendation is if you're comfortable with it, download all of your motherboard drivers and your video card drivers before you uh, begin to wipe your installation, okay? Get a copy of those, put them onto a USB flash drive, and then uh, be sure to uh, disconnect your computer from the internet once you start installing Windows 11. Do not let Windows 11 install your drivers if you can avoid it, okay? Do it yourself manually, get all of your drivers installed. Once your video card drivers, motherboard drivers, chipset drivers are all installed, uh, then connect your computer to the internet and then run your Windows updates. Uh, it just works better when you can get directly from the source. Um, but all of these things are contributing to the fact that I'm actually having a very smooth and very enjoyable experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I am extremely happy with the performance changes that I have seen. Um, again, remembering that I have done a wipe of my computer from Windows 10 in the past um, uh, as far as uh, with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have wiped my computer uh, once, I believe. Did a complete full clean installation Windows 10, then reinstalled Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I did not notice the performance increase as far as load times that I see now. Um, so, you know, mileage may vary. I am on an AMD processor. All of my computer hardware specs are found down in the description below if you're interested in that. Uh, we're rocking, a, you know, the uh, we're still on the GeForce uh, RTX 2080 Ti, um, and uh, all the other hardware still remains the same. Um, I think we're using the Ryzen 3900 XT. Honestly, I forget every single time. I always have to look it back up again. Um, but uh, I'm having a really enjoyable experience. As you guys can see, there aren't any issues that I can complain about. Everything looks nice and pretty. Um, the, the detail is still absolutely fantastic, even at the 85% uh, uh, or the 15% reduction in texture resolution for the monitor. Um, really enjoying it. I'm really having no problems with it. Or not having any problems with it. God, that's such bad grammar. Um... And uh, really, really, it's been, a, it's been a flawless experience so far. I have not experienced any crash to desktops, even though I've installed all of my add-ons and mods. Everything's been reinstalled now. Well, that's not true. Uh, I still have, I am going to be going back to Rex Weather Force based on some of the latest reviews. We're going to be checking that again, so I'm going to be bringing that back. Navigraph is installed again, so we have Navigraph and Navigraph charts back. And then I'm also going to be bringing back in the uh, Rex, texture resolu or, uh, Rex uh, Airport textures. Uh, I really enjoyed that add-on. I thought that was a fantastic add-on. Um, let's go ahead and get our... We're coming in on a very steep approach here, so let's pull that power off. Um, but, uh, I mean, you guys are seeing it. It's, it's flawless. It's nice. It's smooth. It's crisp. Some of the camera jittering that you're seeing is my track IR configuration is not the simulator. Um, so some of that is just, you know, I, I, I told you guys I still need to fine-tune uh, my head tracking settings, but... Uh, 
That's been very good. Been very good so far. There she goes. I love this Cessna 152. I'll also have a link for this in the description below, guys. If you had not, if you have not tried JP Logistics Cessna 152, definitely try it. It's it's an extremely uh, high fidelity. I don't like to say study level, but uh, definitely a very high fidelity uh, simulated version of the Cessna 152. Uh, it's really fantastic, and I am. If you watch my videos from early on on Microsoft Flight Simulator, I despise the 152. You know, again, I'm a big guy. I'm 6'1", um, you know, the weight to match, you know, kind of thing. And uh, so flying the 152 in real life uh, with my dad when he had his license, uh, the thing is just, it's a slug. <laughs> it's great to learn on, but uh, not for me. Not for me. I, I like to fly the faster aircraft. Let's get those flaps down. There she goes. Um, and you guys know me. Always rocking that uh, that space shuttle approach. We're gonna pop her down right on the piano keys. Looking at 50 knots there, maintaining my uh, space shuttle glide slope. Gently leveling her out, and let's let her float in. Just hold it. A little rough, not too bad. Come on, girl. Whoa. Trying to do a donut in a 152. Bad, bad uh, operation on my part there. All right, so let's see. Let's cross that threshold. Flaps retracted. Strobe lights off. Landing lights off. Clear to taxi. All right, guys. So that is my first impressions of the initial impressions for Windows 11. Um, so far, I am still very, very pleased with it. I have no argument to it so far, even with the forewarning of the performance degradation that was uh, that you know I was informed of when dealing with uh, Windows 11, um, I really haven't seen much of it. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm going to tell you that right now. I really haven't. Um, I've been pretty happy with the way things are going now. I didn't want to do that yet. I don't need to close that uh, FPS monitor first. Otherwise, when you restart Microsoft Flight Simulator, the FPS monitor will be there. So let's get that uh, taken care of first. Um, but anyway, I haven't really noticed any major issues. Um, I intentionally ran it with ads and add-ons and things like that because that's how I like to play, and I know that's how most of you guys like to play. Um, we, we all like our mods and add-ons and, and scenery enhancements and things like that. So I, I don't want to test it under the base load. I want to test it under uh, the way that I intend to play it. Um, but uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have already made the jump to Windows 11, let me know any experiences you have, tips and tricks, things like that. Definitely be coming down in the next week or so. And again, if you guys know of any already uh, to uh, further optimize Windows 11 for Microsoft Flight Simulator, by all means, please leave those down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to test them out and make a video on them if they uh, prove to be uh, legit for me. Um, but uh, anyway, guys, as always, have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe and healthy, and I will see you in the next one.